In Office 365, there's an option for data loss prevention. And what this does is it creates rules that allows us to make sure that email does not get lost if certain conditions are met. So let's start by going from our Microsoft Office Home and clicking on the admin icon. And from there, it'll take us to the admin center. And we'll click on the icon on the lower left side and click on Exchange. Once we click on Exchange, it will take us to the Data Loss Prevention area if we click on Compliance Management on the left and then click on Data Loss Prevention at the top. So by default, there are no DLPs, so we'll go ahead and create one. Let's go ahead and click on the plus sign, and we have a few options. One is from a template, which we're going to talk about in another video. One is a custom policy or custom template, and the other is just a new DLP policy. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's start by giving it the name DLP test, although you can call it anything you want. If you want, you could put in a description about what it's for. And then you can choose the state of the policy. By default, it's going to be enabled, but you can certainly disable it if you want to keep it there but not have it enacted. Now, the next thing we have is a very interesting option, and that is we can either enforce the DLP, test it with policy tips, or test it without policy tips. And the policy tips basically give us information about why a DLP failed. Let's go ahead and test it without the policy tips for now. And then let's click Save. And there is our test. So now we need to, now we need to edit it to actually make something happen. So we click on the little pencil. And now we have the option for rules. So let's go ahead and click on rules and we can see that no rules are configured. So here's where we get to the heart of what a DLP is. If we click on the plus sign, we can choose several different options. One of them, it would be to notify a sender when sensitive information is sent outside the organization. So this might be very good for a government agency or maybe a HIPAA or Sarbanes-Oxley type of requirement where you want to be notified if someone says something uh, and sends it outside the organization. You can also block messages with sensitive information, and there's a, several other options as well. But let's go ahead and choose this first one just as an example. And we're going to notify a sender if someone says something they shouldn't say. So sent to uh, outside the organization and apply this rule if the recipient is located external, internal, is a member of this group, address includes any of these words, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, or has a specific domain. So let's go ahead is external, internal, and the message contains any of the sensitive type of information. So let's say select sensitive information types. Let's click on the plus sign. And now we have a lot of pre-configured information for various different countries. So if we scroll down to where it says US bank account number, let's do that. Go ahead and click OK. So if anybody types in a bank account number in an email and sends it to an outside organization, then it will automatically trigger something to happen. So let's go ahead and click OK. So now we can see the recipient is located outside the organization. The message is a US bank account number. We can add additional uh, conditions as well if we want. The next thing is the action. So we've got do the following. Generate an incident report and send it to, let's go ahead and select a person. And let's go ahead and have it sent to myself and notify the center with a policy tip. We can say notify the center, sender, but allow them to send it anyway. We hit the drop down. We can say block the message. We don't want any bank account information going out. And then we can also enter a message for the NDR, which is the un, uh, undeliverable report that the user will receive. In this case, why don't we say uh, you shouldn't send bank info outside our company and they'll get that in the message we can also add additional actions if we want 
such as we can add recipients to this. We can redirect the message to someone else, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's go ahead and remove that. We'll just leave that alone. Now, if the user decides to send bank account information to anyone with the exception of a specific recipient, we will say, is this person? And we'll just go ahead and say uh, this outside user, then it will be ignored. So only Robert Test can get the email with bank account information. Everybody else is going to cause an undeliverable report. So it's definitely recommended that you do a test with this before you enforce it right away because you could generate some unwanted phone calls if you don't uh, get it right the first time. Or you might generate a ton of emails or undeliverable reports if you make a mistake in the rule. Now, as far as activating the rule, by default, it's just always going to be active. But if you want to set a specific date, then you can choose to activate it and deactivate it uh, by a certain time if you'd like. So we'll go ahead and say, oh, keep this active uh, through March of next year. Now, after the rule is applied, do you want to continue on with other rules that are there? Or do you want to just stop and say, OK, we're all done processing rules? We can also choose to defer the message if rule processing doesn't complete, which basically means that if for some reason the rule did not work correctly, we're going to defer the message. Then we have matching the sender address in message. So we've got header, envelope, header, or envelope as far as uh, which part of the message contains the information. We can also put in comments if we want. And then when we're done, we can click Save. And there's our DLP. We can go ahead and once again click Save. And there's our DLP test. If you want, you can also create using a template. And the template has all these different countries and what their va uh, various rules are, such as Australia has a Privacy Act. If you are in Australia and you need to comply with this act, then you would want to create a DLP using this act. So there are all different ones that are pre-made for you to comply with various different countries uh, and what their rules are. So that's how you create a data loss prevention rule in Office 365.